couple of remoters, Mr. Del Pazzo, here with another video. Here we go. Today we're going to do a boa constrictor. The snake that just squeezes you to death. And our boa constrictor is wrapped around a tree. Yeah. From top to bottom. And we're going to put a cool pattern on there. This background, we actually cut these out and taped it on another background, but we'll talk about how you can finish it at home. Here's another very, another very nice I've got. These always come out looking great. I could show you 100 examples, and they're all amazing. So you can see we did a little something different with the background. In this one, we put some grass, tall grass. He just took his me, he's a mean looking snake. I'm going to leave these examples right up here next to the board. Take a peek at them. Remember, pause it, stop it, rewind it, turn it off if I'm driving you nuts. I'm going to go pretty quick so the video is not too long. I'm going to zip right through. But uh, you can go back and check it out again if you need to. Okay? So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate our paper into thirds, three equal size sections. And the middle section is gonna be our tray. So here's my piece of paper. You're gonna to wanna to turn your paper vertical up and down. We use a 12 by 18 sheet of paper, if you have any of that. If you're just using copy paper, obviously you're gonna make it small. So very, very lightly. Now you're gonna to wanna to draw this tree lightly. You're gonna to wanna to draw it lightly because we're gonna be erasing at least 50% of the tree. Even if you make zero mistakes, we're still gonna be erasing 50% of the tree. So if you make it dark, that tree is always gonna be there. So nice and lightly, nice and lightly. Some people like to make the tree a little wider at the bottom. Totally your call. But we're basically gonna separate it into thirds. You can learn a little bit of math here in art class. What more do you want? Now, first thing I'm going to make is my head. The head's kind of like a rectangle, but it's thinner on one side than the other. And I'm going to make that head pretty much right here, almost touching my tree. And you can go as close to the side of the paper as you want. But we have to put that head in just the right spot. Too high, we're going to run out of room up top. Too low, we're going to run out of room for the tail at the bottom. So I'm going to put my head right about here. I would say if that's halfway up my paper right there, I'm going to go a little bit more than halfway. So I would say right here. Right there. So I'm going to draw my head. It's, it's round and then it flattens out. That's kind of the shape you want. I don't even know what shape you would call that. I don't know. But it's kind of like if I had a rectangle and I just squeeze this side down a little bit. But you'll notice that all four corners of that rectangle are round. They're rounded. And at the bottom of this head, I'm going to make a mouth. Snake's mouth is very close to the bottom of his head. His nostril is just going to be a little teardrop, a little, little raindrop kind of a shape. I know it's very small. You can't even see it. His eye, I want to try to make him look mean. So I'm going to make a shape that's going to kind of go up a little bit and then steep down and curl a little bit at the end like that. That's kind of the shape I'm looking for. So I'm going to do it right up in the upper right hand corner of my head. Up and a little bit of a curl at the end. And then I'm going to try to close up that shape with a curved line, kind of like that. So right here. It's kind of like a football with a tail on the side. And then inside there, you got a couple choices. You can do the old triangle eye. Actually, both of these snakes did the same thing. You could do a triangle like that on the eye, or you could do kind of like the cat eye, where it's kind of like a vertical sliver. So you can put whichever one of those you want in there. Totally your call. If it looks mean, one good shape. 
Okay, I'm gonna start right down here at the jaw for my first line. Not at the bottom of the jaw, but I'm gonna just come up just a smidge where it starts to flatten out. And I'm gonna touch his head right there, and I am going to make a backwards letter C. It's gonna go in my tree, and I'm gonna finish about halfway between the head and the top of my paper. So, nice round shape. Starts at the jaw, goes into the tree, curls around. It's like half of a circle. Now I'm gonna make a forwards letter C, kinda of like that. I'm gonna start right up here at the tippy top of his head. Except this way, I'm gonna curve this way. Now, you can get as close to the top of the paper with that line as you want, because there's nothing going above that. Before I go any further, I'm gonna do a little erasing, because right now it looks a little weird. So I'm going to go right here, I'm gonna take this tree, right from the bottom line all the way up. So basically you're erasing the entire tree inside the backwards letter C. Not the one here, not this one inside the frontwards letter C. Just the one in the backwards letter C. If it's a tree inside the backwards letter C, it's gone. Now it looks more like there's a little bit of a curve there. We could even put a little line coming right off the head like this. Like a little it's like a little hair sticking out, but it's just to show the curve. It's, it almost looks like a bubble letter S, kind of. But you can see he's going up behind the tree right now. Now I'm going to come right here where my snake meets my tree, right there. And I'm going to make a line that goes down a little and then curves up. It's kind of like a little smile from one side of the tree to the other. But this side is going to touch the snake. Before I make the next line, we're gonna sh we're gonna make two little marks where we're gonna start and where we're gonna finish, because it's a very long line. So we want to kind of know where we're going. So right about halfway up the head, from the jaw to the nose, about halfway, I'm gonna make a little mark, and that's where I'm gonna start. Then I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna make a little mark where that one is, except right on the other side of the tray. So you just kind of make imaginary line, which you're not drawing anything on the tree. Just, okay, where would that snake come out on the other side? Boop, right there. So that's where I'm starting. That's where I'm going to finish. Now, normally in class, I say measure four fingers and make a mark. The problem is you're not, you might not be using a piece of 12 inch by 18 inch paper. So um, I can't tell you to do four fingers. We're just going to make that snake as thick as you think you need to. So, I don't want to make it too skinny, it's going to look like a worm, and if I make them too thick, we're going to run into paper. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to follow the curve of that line, that's, the, that's my snake right there. That's his body. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to go down, around, and then as I come up, I'm going to flatten out just a little, and then curve around to that dot right there. So, like a soul. I got a little bit of a lump over here. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna erase this side of the tree, not the jaw. And then this side of the tree, I told you we're gonna erase a lot of the tree. I'm only gonna go up to the snake and stop. So that line stays. This part of the snake obviously is in front of the tree. Now, the middle of my snake, this should be about the middle of your paper, What we're gonna, the part we're going to make right now. Because as we go down from there, he's going to get a little bit smaller, as you can see. And then, of course, the tail wraps right around there. So my next line, I'm going to start a little bit outside the tree on the right-hand side. So right about there. Just a little bit outside the tree. So I'm going to curve around. And I'm going to come across the tree. Now, this line that's coming across here should be, a, be about the same, the same from this line to this line as from this line to where I am right now. So you can see where it's about the same. So whatever you did there, sort of did the same thing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across the tree, pretty flat, pretty level. And before I get to the other side, I'm going to curve and make a little loop. Didn't go outside the tree. And I'm going to come up, 
and that's going to touch right where the tree meets the line. So out, curve, across, loop down, not a big loop, and then right up here and touch where the snake, I'm sorry, where the tree and that line meet. So really, the only part of this line that's outside the tree is the very beginning. It's a little tricky. Over, out, across, and loop down, and then up. This is actually, don't, don't write the word tree on your paper, but this is actually the tree right here. This is a hole that we can see. Right there, and right there. So we're actually looking at the tree here. I'm just labeling it so you gotta know. Now I'm gonna hop over here, and just outside the snake, about the same distance you did there, I'm gonna make a little mark, just like that. And I'm gonna come down on this line where this tail is, and I'm gonna make a mark right there too. That mark might be a little bit high, there we go. So, once again, this mark is on the tree up here, above that loop, and this mark is on the tail of the loop, so it's lower. This mark is higher, this mark is lower. That's the beginning, that's the end. I'm gonna come out, curve around, go across, curl up. So you can see this part of the tree right here, or part of the snake right there, curls around. Now I'm gonna erase this part of the tree. I told you to draw your tree lightly. You didn't believe me, I'd never lie to you. And then this side of the tree, Ta-da! Just like so. Now, if you say, well, I'm starting to get that, you might be a little bit lower than me, but if you are, that's okay. I actually have a lot of room left. So I could have made this part and this part of my tree, my snake, thicker, now that I'm looking at it in the iPad, um, but that's okay. And if you want to make it thicker, you don't want to lower this line, you could always make your loop a little bit skinnier. Or you can go lower with it, whatever. Next line is going to be, once again, a little bit outside the tree and the left side, right there. So this one is going to curve out a little, go down. This can be flat or this can be slanted. I'm going to make mine slanted because I have a lot of room. I don't need to save room. So I'm going to go a little slanted, not much. Now, before I get to my tree, I need to start to curve down. Because I don't want to go straight into the tree with this line. I want to curve down and touch it as it's going down. So it creates like a point. Curve down and just like that. So it's very important that that curves down and just kind of meets the tree as it's going downhill. Now I'm going to come inside the tree. Now I can make this, if I put it here, my, it's going to be very skinny. If I put it over here, it'll be very wide. I'm going to go a little bit wide just to match that a little bit. We are starting to get thinner, by the way. Not me, I wish. My snake is starting to get thinner right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very tight turn because I need to follow this line. And I'm going to go out. And I'm going to go outside the tree. Curl down and meet that line so it comes to a point. That's definitely too skinny. So it curves around and those two lines, my first one and my second one, they meet right at a, a little point. So I'm going to erase this part of the tree, this part of the tree, and you can see that because we went down to a point, it looks like it's wrapping around the tree. Very easy way to make something look like it's wrapping around something else. Just come to that point at the bottom. So that would be this part right here. And that would be this part right here. Now my last part, we're going to do the tail and we'll talk about the pattern. I'm going to start a little bit outside the tree again. This time, um, you can go, I like to go to the middle of the tree. You don't have to do that. So I'm, I've got some room, so I'm going to curve over and then point down, kind of like they did there. But you really can make the, the tail 
finish wherever you want, in the middle, over here on the side, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to start out here and I'm going to curl, curve around. Everything has that curve. Bump, 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 bump. I'm going to curve out and around. I'm just going to kind of go down and just find a place to finish your tail. And just like I did here, my next line is above it. Inside the tree. I'm going to go a little thinner because it's almost the end of my snake. Right to, the, right to the end. And we're going to one more part of the tree we're going to raise is right here. Right inside that snake. So really the only parts of the tree you're left with are here, there, that little piece, that piece up there, and that little piece right above the backward C. Every other part of your tree should be gone. So if you didn't draw lightly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so patterns. You can make up your own pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you three or four different patterns on this snake. You can pick one of those. You're only gonna do one though. You don't wanna do a bunch of them. It gets very busy looking. You can use one of mine. Um, these, both of these snakes unfortunately have the same pattern. So I'll show you. And then if you wanna just try something different, you know, go online, maybe find some kind of a pattern on a snake that you find interesting. Um, but the one thing I would say about the patterns, you don't wanna do a million of them. I've seen people who do triangles like this and they do like 150, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, like 100 triangles because they make them like right next to each other and then they do a pattern. So before you know it, and here's the thing, it doesn't look any better with 150 triangles than it does with 20 triangles. Actually the 20 looks better because you can see the snake. We don't want to make it so complicated and this is kind of a complicated drawing. I just went through it in 15 minutes. but. Uh, it's going to take you a lot longer than that. So spread the patterns out. Make them big, spread them out. You got to sharpie every one, you got to color every one, then you have to color around every piece of pattern because the triangles and the snake are two different colors. So spread them out. Six, we need space these days, right? Space between us, space between our shapes. So up here, um, a popular one are the polka dots, right? Circles. So I like to not just do circles in the middle, but you know, like they're peeking around, it makes it look a little more 3D. You can see I'm just kind of big ones, small ones, whatever. Some people like to double up the pattern, right? In other words, you'll to put another line around it. So you can make, you know, this purple, you can make that yellow, you can make your snake, you know, whatever. So what's gonna happen is our snake's gonna be two colors. I would recommend colored pencil for this because they blend very nicely together. If you don't have colored pencils, I would go with crayon second. I would not do this project in marker because we're going to try to blend and color pencils are the best for that. And crayons are second and markers you can't blend. So for your snake, not the pattern, but the actual snake, you're going to mix two colors. So this person blended um, red and pink for that one. This person blended um, blue and green. Usually colors that are close together on the color wheel work really well. Your color wheel. So yellow and orange look good together. Red and orange. Red and violet. Violet and blue. Blue and green. Green and yellow. Colors that are close together on the color wheel. They blend nicely together. Of course, you know, pink isn't on there. and Pink and purple looks good together. Pink and red. So we'll blend a couple colors together for the snake. And in the patterns, if you have a single pattern, then you just put one color in there. And it could be anything. Long you, you want it to show up. If I'm doing a blue-green snake, I don't know if I'm going to do blue pattern kind of thing. And then if you double them up, then you've got two different colors you can use for those patterns. Right? So circles are one. You can see I'm just spacing them out a lot. And you can always go back and add more pattern if you want. Second one would be the triangles, right? People like to do the triangles, whether they're a single triangle or doubled up. And, you know, space them out. As the snake turns, the pattern turns. Now, circles, it doesn't matter when they turn. They're the same. Triangles, you turn it. Right? So then you do them maybe there. So just space them out. Another one, um, ball pythons kind of have like this little splotch on it, which is kind of like almost like a camel kind of a look. 
just kind of like a wiggly line. Once again, you can double them, you don't have to. Just kind of like a random splotch. And then another popular one are stripes. Some people will do one stripe. Some people like to do like a thick stripe and then like little thin racing stripes. Once again, you can add a second color. And when you turn for the stripes, your stripe will turn too. I would probably space those out a little bit more, but I just, I only had a little tail to show you. So, but if you want to do something else, but you know, like I said, don't, don't do a million of it because your snake will then disappear. All you're going to see is just mass confusion. So snake, blend two colors together. Pattern, if it's a single pattern, just the one color. Or if it's a double, you can do two different colors so the pattern stands out really nice. Background, I've done so many different things with this background. So, um, on this one, we actually cut the snake out. We, taped, we glued him onto a piece of black paper. And then we just cut tall grass so he's kind of like in the weeds. And we just glued grass on top of there. This one, we actually did a texture rubbing. When you put something bumpy underneath and you take a flat crayon and go, and it creates bumpy texture. So we did some bumpy textures in the background. This was a green piece of paper. Oh, of course you have to color your tree too. You can do one color for the tree, two colors. They just use dark brown for the tree. This person actually blended blue and green for the tree. You could do brown and gray, gray and um, black. You could do tree whatever color you want. And of course the tree is there, there, there. That's the tree in the animal hole. And then up here. And you have about, I don't know, you could just maybe take your markers if you want to use markers. I wouldn't use markers for the snake, but if you want to use markers, if you have white paper, you could always draw, always make some tall grass if you want them in the grass. Do whatever you want. Put them wherever you want. Okay? It's a very cool drawing. People usually like this one. Make sure when you're done, pop it into Teams. Um, you can hand it in in the assignment section or just like in the chat room or just send me a little chat for Teams and, and, and put the picture on there because I certainly want to see how they're looking. I promise I will give you a, um, a shout back. Once you're done, um, first week you draw it, right? So the first class you would draw that. And then the second class, the following week, you'd color it in. I don't know if you're going to get this done and just color it in like in a 36 minute period. You might have to color a little bit longer. Listen, if you don't get a drawing done in two weeks, don't worry about it. When you finish it, you throw it into Teams and I'll check it out. Not a big deal. But ever the videos, I'll usually do every other week to allow two art periods um, to finish it. And if it takes longer, it takes longer. Not a big... Okay, guys. I will see you later. I miss you. Bye.